All right, and welcome back, everyone. Money Show would like to welcome Linda Rashke, president of the LBR Group Incorporated. Linda has been a full-time professional trader since 1981. In addition to running successful CTA programs, she has been principal trader for several hedge funds and has run commercial hedging programs. She's been active with the Market Technicians Association for many years and has lectured in over 30 countries. Linda, it's a pr privilege to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. It's all yours. You betcha. Let's get down and dirty here because we only have a short and sweet 30 minutes. And I try to present something interesting and unique each time. And the lovely thing is that it forces me to delve down into the data and communicate a concept to you. And the types of concepts that I like to focus on are things that are universal. So what I say today, I'm going to start off by just presenting on five-minute charts, but they really can be used on any time frame, any market, and we'll conclude at the end of this by looking at one or two daily uh, instances where you can apply this as well. So um, just be patient. It's uh, They're just short-term patterns. And when I say scalping, that means looking for one or two bars. So a scalp on a daily chart just could be one or two daily bars. A scalp on a five-minute chart just could be two to three five-minute bars. So keep that in mind that I use that a little bit loosely. Um, but this started off, I'm just going to advance our slides a little bit so we can get going here. Um, blah, 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 risk disclosure, blah, blah. Okay. What I wanted to look at was something that could be appropriate, first of all, for newer traders, because when you bite off something into a very succinct little piece, it helps alleviate stress and anxiety and emotions that can uh, sometimes get the better of us if we get too reactive or anxious in the marketplace. And I have a friend, Hans, who um, likes, who's, he's been a, a trading buddy for 20 years and he has reduced his trading down now. I think he's kind of semi-retired to doing exactly this type of trading, what he calls structured trades. And that's simply where you have one bar and you can define your entry by that as well as your stop point by that. And then to exit, you're looking to exit within two to three bars or scale out. So super simple, don't need any indicators here. The only indicator that we have is the candlestick bar. And then we'll add one filter to that, which is simply volume. So once the trade is triggered, you'll see that the average holding time tends to be two bars. And you would be surprised at how much you can uh, take out making one or two trades a day and holding for two bars. So I preface this by saying if you were walking down the street and you saw a dollar bill lying on the sidewalk, you would definitely pick it up. Now you're not going to get rich from doing that, but the way I look at it is I'm sitting in front of my screens all day anyway, and I might have longer term positions I'm nursing or be watching for a different type of trade. But if you see one of these unfold in the meantime, why not? So consider it to be a supplemental profit center, if you will. So what we have to do during the day as well is to make things fun and sometimes kitschy little names of patterns exactly are that. So uh, we are going to start off by just calling this the umbrella trade and I can't take credit for this name, but that's one thing that we're going to look at. And soon these umbrellas give away to the eat the tail trades and then we have hot dogs and hamburgers. And then lastly, there's the classic classic outside up bars and outside down bars, the fit, which is a failed inside bar breakout, and lastly, the wide range reversal that sets up on climaxes at the tops and bottoms of the Keltner channel.
So all of these are things that you actually can apply to multiple time frames, multiple markets. And here we'll just start looking at um, exactly what I'm talking about. Now my friend Hans kept on referring to this umbrella and I was honestly, Hans, I have no clue what you are looking at or what you are talking about until he explained that the umbrella trade, and I have no idea why it's called this, is where you have a candlestick tail like we have right here, and then the body of the following bar is inside that tail, and it sets up a great breakout trade where you could have a resting buy stop, and then once filled, put the protective stop on the other side of the bar. and. Um, you might get four great ones a week on a five minute S&P market. So when we look at these patterns, definitely it's up to you to investigate them and understand the frequency of occurrence. Now, here was obviously something to start getting you excited about this. I wanted to also show you and this is why it's important for you to go back and look at these yourself. Something that really did not get going here. It was a little bit more of a fizzle, but it met the classic definition of having the body inside the tail. It just ate that tail before it gave you a chance to put in a buy stop, which would have been a little bit far away. So we have our umbrella trade, and then we also have the eat the tail, okay? Now stick with me on this because I know it doesn't sound very sophisticated, but you might be surprised at some of the things that we can derive out of this. Okay, so normally with tails, they can also be called price rejection spikes. It's a failed auction where the market reached a new level and failed, okay? So no buyers came in at the top of this after that failed auction. And so we traditionally think of these tails as giving some type of indication to the opposite direction. Now, what I need to say, first of all, is that tails in light volume trading range mean nothing, that they also can be pure noise, that there isn't really a significant auction going on. But here at the tops and bottoms of swings, or right when you're first breaking, that is indeed the auction process. So let's look at this second spot right here where we had the candlestick tail and the reason i want to go over this a couple times is because so many times um, it's easy to think that this was a test of this previous low and that this tail actually means that it could be a buy which of course is nothing further than the truth here and we're going to look down into the dynamics of what really happens. So here, there was a case where the market ate the tail, all right? Once you see something start to come back down and fill this tail area, there are very high odds that it is going to go through that tail. And sometimes people mistakenly put stops right at the bottom of those tails, which is really poor trade location. Um, I guess some stop is better than no stop, but be mindful that if you see it start to fill, um, pretty high odds that it will then take that out. And if you had a sell stop there, you surely could have grabbed a few shekels to the downside. And here was a much more profound one. It was not an umbrella trade. It was just a pure eat the tail. And of course, this gave a much more dramatic uh, move. Now, here's something about patterns and systems and strategies. What we find is that maybe 20% of the time, 
do we truly get one of those big giant home run trades? So this is definitely an exception that you would get that type of goosing, but you never know. We never know in advance just how much or how little that market is going to give. And so it's a matter of playing the game. So when you do these types of little short-term trades, be mindful that it's the results over 20 trades that count, not just little individual ones. And what will happen too, is if you made it a practice of trying this, um, you'll know very quickly if it's going to be a huge win or not, because the uh, ones that don't go just sort of dribble and dribble. Um, so if you did, for example, have a sell stop here, you could have had your protective stop on the other side. Um, here was a case, I wanted to point this out, where indeed we ate the tail, but what's so different about this is that you were really in a downtrend. And I'm simply going to use the slope of this moving average for a guideline as to the trend. So you wouldn't have gotten hurt, but you really would not have made anything here as well. Um, it, it probably would have been frustrating to initiate a long up here and then just go nowhere. So First of all, we want to see the volume and a bit of trend starting. We also want to see, um, you know, the, the defined tail structure. I'm going to point out one more trade that we'll go over. I have talked about this in the past, and this was not uh, a trade that would have triggered, but I want to draw your attention to these V bottoms that come in. And what I like to do is to, if I have a close outside of that Keltner channel, and then we take out the height of that bar within two bars, that is a V spike reversal, and it does shift the momentum to the upside. So in theory, you could have used that logic for some data point right here, looking for the fact that it came back inside. But we always want to be mindful when you have that V, a lot of times people will look at this as perhaps the start of a bear flag where we could go back down and retest without recognizing that you did a complete shift in the momentum. So on this slide, I, I just wanted to really go over the, again, once this eat the tail concept. So let's advance on and look at a few more things. Here was an, a perfect umbrella trade, all right? It was where the body was inside this tail. And you can see that you didn't really get much out of that. And the reason is, is because once again, you are not in that uptrending. You know, you could, you could say, I'll only take these if the price is above the moving average or, you know, I'll only do the sells if it's, you know, coming back down below the moving average. You didn't get hurt, okay? That's the most important thing. But you'll recognize pretty quickly where stuff goes nowhere. And that's the reason why it was already, you know, a little bit late in the game there. This is the type of environment that we want to avoid. How many times do we see this in the middle of the day? And so the number one filter for this trade or any scalping pattern based off five minute candles is do not look for these things when there is light volume and lack of volatility because the odds are that you're just going to be trapped in the noise. And when you are in noise, trade location becomes increasingly important. So don't look for, even today, you know, we did uh, pick off a few trades today, and I'll show you those um, at the end of this. But today was a very, very light volume day. And so on light volume days, you tend to go nowhere. So be mindful of that. Okay, now this obviously was like an FOMC type of day. You can see the announcement coming out at one o'clock. 
I want to show you one other little fun pattern and it's called the hot dog pattern. We have hot dogs and hamburgers and uh, again they, we just get a giggle out of these during the day looking for these but the hot dog is simply where that middle bar has the body that's greater than the two bars on either side and it's a little breakout formation you see. So the hot dog, you tend to have the uh, the dog there a little bit wider than the two other bars. And the hamburger trade, which is another variation on the three bars price overlap, is simply where the patty is a little bit smaller than the buns on either side. Okay, um, and so with this trade, you can still use the same logic of a structured trade, meaning put the sell stop right here for the breakout bar, use the protective stop if you are pulled in, and voila. Now the thing I want to mention is you're in for one bar, two bars. So most, whoops, most of these trades do not last more than one and a half to two bars. And if you know that in advance, the minute you are in, you will be looking over a 10 minute period to scale out. And uh, it's nice to feel that that is going to be the optimal exit. You know, sometimes it takes the anxiety out of your decision making process if you know what the optimal time horizon is for holding. Okay, so little hot dog breakout trade, you might get three of these a week on a five minute market. Next, one more eat the tail trade because this was a classic, beautiful umbrella. Now it's still a flat trend, but it's different from this low volume trading range environment because the market here has truly come to life and we had extremely heavy volume. So anytime we've got the heavy volume, I like to play the game. And here was your umbrella, the body inside the tail, sell stop here for entry, protective stop here. Now you're short and you are looking to scale out. So it would have been just fine if you were out, you know, somewhere on this bar. And if you got a little bit of peace here, more power to you. But what did we do? we set up one more funky umbrella because this has been the skinniest umbrella. I don't think it's going to keep any rain out here, but once again, you could have put in a sell stop at that tail point. Here's the other thing about using buy and sell stops for entry. You know, you always can turn around and scratch it with one mouse click immediately if you don't like it you know, and you're anxious, but you never get a chance to get back into the very good trades. I learned that with a volatility breakout system. Let the market pull you in to the system's parameters. If you don't like it or you feel uncomfortable, you have the option of immediately scratching out these days with our electronic platforms. It's so easy, but you never get a chance to get back into those good ones. So you can see again, one and a half bars, two bars, that's your optimal exit point. It looks so clean and easy in hindsight, doesn't it? But you really have to make the trade to experience uh, it, and then you slowly gain confidence. Okay, so here was a, a good tail. Now we also know that these price rejection spikes are unlikely to lead to too much upside because look at the um, slope of the trend down here. And you had all these previous, uh, you know, lower highs and lower lows into this. So, at the very most, maybe you would have gotten one more bar up, but we don't always know if we're going to get that or not. But if instead you say, well, I know if we take out this tail, I can at least get something. And you see again, the one half bar down in time duration and one more bar down. 
So this was a scalp that could have lasted, you know, seven or eight minutes at the most, and that's fine. Like I said, this may not be your primary strategy during the trading day, but if you just happen to see, you know, two or three of these during the week, uh, it's wonderful. The challenge is you can't be watching too many markets for this particular pattern. So if you have a primary market you prefer to trade, that's where it might suit you best. Um, and then here is a quasi little umbrella bar because we have the inside bar giving you extra time to put in a sell stop to pull you into this trade. And this truly is an outlier. You rarely get one, two, three, four bars down like this. And uh, you probably could have scaled out thinking that perhaps this, you know, anywhere in here was wonderful to take profits. That is going to be a function of your tape reading ability. But at any rate, this is your best case scenario. So always look for the ones that don't give much and then look for the ones that, you know, how it can play out as well. So another concept that isn't really one that lends itself to a structured trade, but does lend itself to recognizing a shift in momentum is a simple outside up bar. So that tells us something if the market is strong enough that it can look on one side of the bar and come out the other side of the bar. You've shifted the momentum to the upside. So not a mechanical or systematic trade that you can make, but important to recognize that. We didn't quite get our wide range reversal buy pattern down here, but the fact that you tested below like that so much um, you know, is telling you that that was an extreme. And again, recognize that the momentum has shifted because if I looked at any oscillator, it would have looked like it was making new momentum lows and you might get caught looking for the flag formation for a retest back down. But remember, after these Vs or these outside up bars, you are much less likely to do that. And you don't want to be putting in a, a, a short trade right here and a stop somewhere and risking getting stopped out. So I also wanted to show you what a, a trade that was filtered out might look like. So here it does look like you have the perfect umbrella setup, the tail, the body inside the tail, why not have a sell stop right there? Well, the reason is you're above the 20 period moving average with a bit of uptrend to it, don't take these, okay? So be mindful of the trend and be mindful of the volume and volatility. Now here's another one, we actually made this trade yesterday I didn't stay with it um, as I should have, but it was a perfect umbrella setup. So we did put a sell stop right here, got stopped into the trade with a little bit of noise. The, the, the protective stop should go on the opposite side of the bar and then you, you did get a significant bit of goosing to the downside. So um, I left money on the table with that one, but we did, uh, we did do that uh, in uh, our little trade room. So here is, I wanted to show you how this could work as well on other time frames and other markets. And then we're going to move on and look at just a few more things. I can cover a lot in 30 minutes. So here's our uh, body. This is a 30 minute chart and you have the tail and the body, which lends itself to a buy stop. Whoops. And remember what I said that, um, the average holding time is uh, just roughly two bars. And so you can see two bars here could have been an hour long duration or 45 minutes of duration. So that's why I, I refrain from saying a, a, a minute period of time because if it was a daily bar, um, you, you'd, you'd put the same principle to work. So it's upside breakout, 
test above the high of the breakout bar is our rhythm for the volatility breakout types of plays, which are range expansion. We look for the range expansion and what is the percent of time that we trade above the range expansion high. It's a really lovely model that you can do a lot with. Now at the top here, this was a beautiful example of a wide range reversal cell. And it's showing the shift in momentum because we had the close outside the Keltner channels and we took out the low of this bar within two bars. Now perhaps I'm not going to use this for a scalping pattern, but it's really important to recognize the shift of that momentum because when you have a range expansion bar like that, just like we had here, just like we had here, you should not take out the low of that bar within two bars. If you do, then it was a trap. So this was a good example of what those traps can look like. Here we have a, an inverse hot dog formation. This is a vegetarian hot dog because we obviously have a big cucumber right in the middle of these two little buns here. So um, they have the, uh, it wasn't quite an umbrella, almost. You could look at this in the umbrella context as well. And uh, you can see here the upside breakout. Now, if you did not have a buy stop resting in advance, then you probably would have gotten left in the dust here. But at any rate, that was a fun example. And just think in terms of the little hot dogs and hamburger breakout bars as being three or four bars of price overlap. Pretty simple. At the top here, we have our FID. The FID is the failed breakout from an inside bar. And some people, um, have, I believe many, many uh, decades ago, uh, referred to this as the Haikaki pattern, which is a failed breakout on a daily chart. And in this case, we're just looking at little five minute chart. This is a trade where we can do this counter trend, okay? Meaning that you can look for a reversion to the mean as opposed to filtering this out saying, I don't want to look for a, a short trade because the trend is up here. That's only true with continuation patterns and our eat the tail and our umbrella trades are a form of continuation pattern. However, here it was again that failed auction type of theory that we would have with the wide range reversal. So if you were watching this on a bar by bar basis, and you saw this little coil forming and the market went out and tested above that high, and then it started to come back down, that is your failed auction, and it lends itself to a, a sell stop. In this particular case, you didn't get much out of it, and that's what we want to always examine is there's times where we have huge wins, and there's times where it just leads to a little small nothingness, but you didn't get hurt because if you had had a sell stop here, it never really backed up much against you. So I, it's my job to not just show you the glory winning trades, but also possibilities of other ways that this can unfold. And here you see the little funky skinny hot dog, which at this point you're just getting too much uh, overlap and you also, um, you, you could have made a, a sell stop there, but just be quick to recognize that it was against the trend here. The hot dog, uh, hot dogs really are great for breakouts in the bigger picture trend. So uh, it was pretty marginal, but at this point, you also did something funny where you looked above the high and once again ate the tail here and at this point 
we do have enough of a downtrend, although it's not showing up in the moving average. If I had to draw a line as to the slope of this, it would be pretty flat. But it just gives us confidence that if you take this trade, more often than not, you've just got about two bars in your favor to exit. So in perhaps you're scaling out, getting something, hopefully a piece somewhere down here. If you are trading one contract only, and perhaps you're not doing micro minis, which would afford you that opportunity to scale, always exit your one contract at the point where you would be exiting your first piece of a scale, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, just a few more slides here, short and sweet. Outside up bar does not lend itself to a structured trade, but a fun thing to watch during the day and make note of the way that it shifts the momentum back up and uh, that you can work with these to find an entry for the market then. At the top, okay, I wanted to show you as well an eat the tail trade, but we would not do this. And the reason is, is because strong uptrend. And if you look at the oscillator at the bottom, it also confirms the fact that we made new momentum highs. Now you know that you don't need to have an oscillator to tell you that you made new momentum highs. What determines the new momentum highs is the length of the swing. So if I looked at this swing up, followed by this swing up, and this is a much larger swing up and longer duration, that's new momentum highs right there. So don't be looking for the counter trend trades in this case. Don't be looking for the wide range reversals, you know, when you've got this new momentum highs and still a strong trend. And then lastly, once again, that outside up bar really shifts that momentum to the upside. Not a structured trade, but important to be aware of. Now, you see the little orange dots on my chart here. I put orange dots at the 7 a.m. Central Time reading, and I can also put the dots at the opening of the NYSE session. So I like to look at the continuous data, and this just reminds me of where the market was when I sat down, and I kind of treat the S&Ps as uh, starting at uh, 7 Central Time or 8 Eastern Time, even though we still have a full hour and a half before the New York opening. And this was a fun little example because this happened, drum roll, today. So this was on the most pathetic light volume trading range day. It was a great example of that little five-minute false upside breakout from this inside bar fail and come out the downside. If we had had heavier volume, this could have careened down a little bit more quickly than it did, but it's a great example of a structured trade, a sell stop here, your protective stop on the other side. You can actually use it right here, uh, you know, here, here, you know, either way, you weren't going to get stopped out and it's just how you manage that. Never feel badly if, um, if uh, you know, you, you get out and take a small piece and then it ends up falling out of bed. And the reason I say that is once again, because the very best trades just continue on down. So if you got out too early, it means it was a marginal environment anyway. Never beat yourself up for that stuff. You know, you know the good trades are the ones where you're like, damn, why didn't I sell 10? Why did I just sell one? You know, that type of feeling, okay? If you feel that type of feeling, then you know you caught a big fish and just ride it for a little bit. Now, remember, I told you this is squeezing water out of a rock today. And this was a gold similar type of pattern where we had the hot dog up at the top there, the outside bar with the two little inside skinny buns there. And uh, indeed, it was a form of an eat the tail where you could have had a sell stop here. 
boom, boom. Once again, you see how even in the gold market, you're getting two bars. So a uh, very short holding time on average. Um, and then lastly, this was a little trade we, we did together. We have this little uh, trading room just for, for fun. It keeps things uh, a nice pace during the day. And um, we sort of had an inside range bar. And I thought this was enough of a base that we could put a, a buy stop right above that spike there for a long didn't get very much that's the problem with this light volume here but you didn't get hurt either and it never came back down below that swing um, that little candle high so again just uh, there's always something to do somewhere and this was the crude oil market today this was another trade that set up really early in the morning. This was a classic umbrella bar here because you had the tail, the body inside the bar, the sell stop right there, and of course this was a huge spike rejection through the Keltner channel. Remember, if you think holding time no more than two bars, you know, you uh, it, it, this, this was basically it, and then it started coming back out the upside. So kind of slim pickings today, but there's always something somewhere. Now I'm going to show you how you can take these same concepts and apply them to uh, some other markets and other time frames. This was actually a trade that we did yesterday in the beans because we were just having fun with this um, little bit of uh, umbrella stuff. So uh, the beans when we came in the morning had already formed this. So uh, Kyle and I, my assistant and I were looking at this going up, oh, it's going to eat that tail there. And uh, sure enough, it, you know, it, it came down so quickly, we didn't, we didn't do anything or get a chance to do anything because it basically gapped down in our US pit session. And I only use pit session data for trading the beans. But then, lo and behold, it started to sneak back up and we were playing around with our goofy false inside day breakout. Okay, with the, see you have the inside bar and in this case, if it was a false bar, well, that's what it was. So when it came back up, back to this point, and looked like it was going to be a false breakout, so we initiated a long trade. And uh, it was a little bit of a happy ending there, and today it did trade higher. So um, that's how you can look at this still basic concepts. I have just a few more charts to show you, but let's summarize real quickly here. The frequency of occurrence is always an important consideration for any strategy that you're looking at. So if I remind myself that I might only get three or four of these particular patterns a week, for example, three or four eat the tails or three or four umbrellas or little hot dog breakouts or, or maybe one or two wide range reversal type of patterns that's going to keep me from over trading and keep me from wanting to uh, read everything I can into every bar. So it's really up to you to study this for yourself. Do not over trade with this little uh, price action or bar by bar trading. It is the biggest mistake I see newer traders make is not understanding that you have to be very selective and have well-defined um, setups. They're hit and run trades. These are not going to lead to trend trades. They're not the type of structure. We need a more sophisticated, comprehensive structure to really demand a longer holding period of time. Treat them for what they are, just fun little things to help pass the time in the middle of the day. The main patterns that set up counter trend trades are the wide range reversals at the Keltner channels, these false, you know, inside uh, bar breakouts, okay? And sometimes you can get like hot dogs or hamburgers, the little three bars at the top of a swing. Don't trade in the middle of ranges when the noise, you know, is going to get the better of you. 
by the way, how many of you looked at that top that was made in the 30-minute silver and gold when most of us were just getting up out of bed? Uh, it was a classic price rejection spike, wide range reversal up at the top. We do best in volatility and volume. Always remember that, okay? Don't force stuff in light volume chop. Okay. Lastly, I, I've, I do have a parting shot after this slide. So I do want to show you the parting shot, but this is what we do during the day. Damon and I sit here and it's the first time we've ever really had a chance to trade together. It's the first time he's ever had a chance to sit in front of the screen all day and trade and do nothing but trade, you know, before he was usually um, running Future Path and the Photon software. But we have a lot of fun during the day. He has his specific trades that he makes, particularly in crude oil and S&Ps. And I like to do a little bit of everything else, including stocks. So let me show you a, a, a parting shot here because uh, I just saw this at the end of the day. And uh, I know that, you know, that, that a lot of people um, love to trade stock options. And uh, I just wanted to show you how this pattern unfolded on one of the stocks that we were watching today. The Trade Desk, TTD, okay? This actually trades weekly options. And you see the big tail here that formed. Now, traditional thinking might be that this was a test reject, okay? Meaning that it was a failed auction. But instead, when you see these little tails and you go down to that lower time frame, you'll see that it actually is a flag or a continuation pattern here. So anytime, even if you see a five minute tail on a candlestick chart, a five minute S&P chart, look at a one minute chart and you'll see that if it's going to eat the tail, it's going to be a continuation flag pattern. This is what the silver looked like this morning on the 30 minute. And I know this isn't a candlestick chart, but imagine if it was, you can see that you had the close outside the Keltner channel and you reversed back down within two bars. And that shifts all the momentum back down. So really important to recognize that these failed auctions and this is a way that you can quantify that. If you have any questions you are more because I know that we have a very short um, schedule here you are more than welcome to send me an email. Um, if you go to my website lindarashke.net You'll see something that says, uh, you know, feedback or contact us or something, and I will answer your questions there. And also, if you are interested uh, in finding out a little bit more about what Damon and I do during the day, and Kyle, he's part of the team, we're all a little collective team, and we're trading uh, live during the day and, and showing these things. And Damon's exceptional about showing, working these trades on the chart and moving the stops up and down. And um, he has quite a feel. He uses the market profile. So a completely different style that when I went over here. But hopefully after this presentation, you'll be on the guard for looking for these little tails, especially in an increase in volume and volatility. You'll be paying attention to when we get those wide range reversals through the Keltner channels. And lastly, the little failed inside bars, the little hot dogs and hamburgers. And honestly, um, you're not going to get rich doing them, but it makes it fun to have something to look for. And I have found that they work in just about every market, every time frame, as long as you've got a little bit of volume. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, did I use up all my time there? Yep. Yep. It looks like we're, we've got you covered. 
All righty. Thank you, guys. Have a good rest of the week. Don't forget quadruple expiration tomorrow. Drum roll. And then we'll see what happens the following week. Night, gang.